Oh, have I joined Zed Cars? That's very easy. Uh, I was playing at the time, I was playing in the Mousetrap, uh, the 17th year of the Mousetrap, playing DC Trotter. And there was an actress in the cast called uh, Dorothy Batley who was playing Mrs. Boyd. And as the year ended, Dorothy said, well, I'd like to go into Zed Cars because her son-in-law, Richard Bainham, was the producer and they were looking for a new copper. So um, I, I bit her hand off, you know, I said, yes, please. And uh, went along to meet Richard and we got on all right and, and I was in. All right. So I've got a bit of a mood on, and you want to know why. Well, it's because I feel a bit cooped up. Cooped up? Yeah, for years. In this job? Well, I meant the way I live, but I suppose that does include the job, yeah. What, what do you have to do if you're an actor? Even if you're playing Satan, you have to look for his good points. And uh, and I just thought Skinner was very sad and um, very funny. And his relationship with the other coppers was very funny because they all thought he was very sad as well. How do you hear? Joe's looking after Tom Stone's witness. He's as scared as a perishing schoolgirl. You're up the wall, man. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm off at six. How would you like your Uncle Jeff to come along and hold your hand? I'd like Uncle Jeff to keep his dirty big mouth shut. <laughs> the first basic decision was he was going to be a, a Tyneside or a Geordie or um, a Northerner anyway, because that's where I came from, and uh, I'm a great believer in using one's own accent if you can get away with it. So much easier than using somebody else's. I wouldn't like you to get the wrong idea, Sarge. Why? Having to use me instead of a proper CID bloke. There's no need for you to worry, you know. I mean, I won't, uh... What? Let you down? I loved everything about it, really. I mean, I, li the, the, I like the cars. I mean, I like being out on location, filming on location, driving around in the police cars. That was, that was great fun. It was easier doing it in the real car, because you didn't have to act the driving. Acting the driving in the studio was the most difficult bit. Sitting there doing this and trying to keep them look as though you're going the right speed, same speed as the, as the screen, uh, and at the same time not sitting doing this. And you're, doing, you're trying to act that. You're also trying to remember lines and have dialogue. Uh, it, it was quite difficult. The first time I got into a Z car and had to act as well, I couldn't remember how to drive. I couldn't remember where the gear lever was or what, what I did with the... And I was sitting like this because I was so concentrating on the words and remembering the words. And so a great lesson was learned there, that um, if, you're going to, if you're going to act while you're driving a car, you've got to know your words very, very well. I got on very, very well with Bernard and Holly, of course, because we were in the car together for quite a long time. And Bernard used to get me to location, because I could never find the locations. And he was, he was actually, he was brilliant at um, finding locations. And I would, I would say, where's Brentford? Bernard, where's Brentford? We'd say, oh, get in my car. <laughs> if the kids really need anything, you know, you... I'm all right. No, but there are, we can't Look, some... thanks for the lift. I'm sorry you've been troubled. The scenes I like best, I think, were the uh, very abortive love scenes. It always ended up in disaster. Um, the scenes were usually very funny because the audience knew there was going to be a disaster. Because Joe was not good with women. Just off home to your kid, are you? Mm, baked beans and cocoa. Well, that's good nourishment, that. We're going out for a few beers. That's not so good. Yeah. Did you ever get in the castle? Now and then, yeah. Yeah, so do I sometimes. Just for a couple. Might see you there. Great. I didn't really want to leave Zed Cars. It wasn't my choice. Um, we had a new producer came in, uh, Roderick Graham. And he wanted, I think, A, to make an impact or be a bit of a new broom. And also wanted, uh, possibly he didn't like me. I don't know. But and, uh, anyway, he telephoned and said that at the end of my current contract, I was going to be killed off. And I was. Oh, pretty miserable. I mean, I wasn't. I didn't want to go. Um, it's very sad, but because uh, I've been very, very happy there. But, but in, in, in the long run, it might have been a good thing. Does that uniform make you think you're a nine to fiver all over again, Sarge? You know, I'm trying to work out if you think at all any of the twenty-four hours of the day. Like you said, Sarge, I'm not CID anymore. You work it out for your cellar. The, the main change in my life was I played a hell of a lot of policemen since Zed Cars. <laughs> Keep playing them on tour and playing them on television, playing them in films. The strangest encounter I had, I think, was in, in Australia, and it was just last year, that's what was odd about it. I was way out in the wilds in the Hunter Valley, went into a little pub bar uh, to get some lunch, and as soon as I walked in through the door, someone started whistling. <laughs> and I just, I couldn't believe it, that after 45 plus years, uh, in this particular remote spot, I was instantly recognised by someone. It's a very pleasant feeling to be part of something which is iconic, which is in itself legendary. Now, Doctor Who has the same impact, and one can actually say it's sort of at the end of a career, you can say, wow, I was part of that, 
Uh, that's, to me, that feels very good. It's my legacy.